Colossians 3 and 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Galatians. Seven, six and seven. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Call the law, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than never. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathen, that look like the heathen. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, this video is called Filthy, Disgusting, Nasty Sex on Slave Ships. And it's by Historic. History Facts uh, 3. And though he gives you a lot of truths, I'm going to fill in some gaps and uh, and point out some, some missing history that's right before your face that most people miss. And let me first start by saying, let me, let me grab another scripture, which is Jeremiah 50 and 33. And it reads... Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel, which is speaking of the northern kingdom, so-called Latinos, natives, the, the indigenous people of the Americas, of the islands, from Canada to Brazil to the islands. Okay? The children of Israel and the children of Judah, so-called black people, so-called people that they brought from West Africa. So you have a doctrine being taught that there was no African slave trade. Now that's just a com that's a complete and total lie. That the the natives here were you know the black people here already are, are you know are indigenous to the land and didn't come from Africa. That's not true. What you will find is that those black people that were already here, those brown people, because there's no such thing as black. I'm gonna prove that in a second. That that's a social construct that was made up, same as white. To, and, and then they get all these false and fake doctrines that, that, you know, they go behind them to confuse people. But the brown, dark brown, melanated, sometimes kinky hair, just like Negro, people who are already here were of the northern kingdom of Israel. Hence the reason why it was hard to tell them any difference from them from, from one of these people on the screen. In 1683 in Virginia, they were declared to be one people the so-called native and the Negro. Why? Because they look so much alike. And the reason they looked alike is because they were the same people. All right. And you have to understand the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, you know, it was a triangular slave trade. But what you have to realize is that the indigenous people here of the Americas were being taken back on those ships and sold into slavery in Europe. And see, they leave that part out. All right, the indigenous population of the Americas, as soon as, as uh, Christ Cristobal Colon and his men set, when they started uh, taking slaves, when they were bringing slaves here, they were taking slaves out of here to, uh, to Europe. And they've conveniently tried to uh, ignore this, this historical fact. I have a book on the shelf behind me, I believe it's called The Indian Slave Trade. By, yeah, it is. The Indian Slave Trade by Alain Galay, which actually chronicles a ship called the Royal Anne, which in 1715, his cargo, uh, it talked about his cargo, and his cargo on it had Negro slaves and Native American slaves. All being, but they were all one people. That's where the confusion comes in, because then you got people that want to deny that the fairer, fairer complected people of the Natives are not that people. They're the victims of, of, of rape, robbery, murder, the same as the so-called Negroes, as we're going to watch in this video. And being that there's so much information, you know, this will probably be a two or three-part video, right? Because there's so much information that needs to come out. 
because the scriptures clearly tell you that both the northern and southern kingdom went into slavery together, and that is when it happened. You have to remember, a hundred years before they started going to the west coast of Africa, a hundred years before, they were taking the natives from the islands, from Hispaniola, which is which is modern day uh, Haiti and, and Dominican Republic. They were taking the natives from Puerto Rico, from Cuba, all right, and and even from Florida. And they were being taken, uh, unshipped before King Fernandan and Isabella and sold. This is a hundred years before they started going to the West Coast of Africa to get their brothers. Because the thing is, is that the people that lived in the West Coast of Africa and built up all those kingdoms along the Niger River going into the West Coast, Benin, Senegal, Mali, and all those areas, uh, uh, Nigeria, those were Israelites. They were a different dark race of people from the, uh, from the Africans. So let's, uh, let me grab a quick video that I came across on YouTube. I mean, not YouTube. Uh, put this book down. Look at those pages. And this was some pretty interesting information. And though this brother is really, uh, you know, he knows, but he don't know. All right. He's, he's got, he's got a, a portion of knowledge, but not knowledge. All right. Because uh, he's making the Negro and the African the same people, even though he reads a definition that clearly tells you that they're not. All right. And this is in the, the Law's Black Dictionary. I didn't even know this definition was there. All right. And I have a Law's Black Dictionary to think the second or third edition. So without any further ado, let's, uh, let's play this brother's video. If you still identify as black, person of color, Indian, Pan-African, you're saying to the universe and in law, you're dead. Brace yourself. Watch. Let's go. Book reference. Colored. By common usage in America, this term in such phrases as colored persons, the colored race, colored men, and the like is used to designate Negroes or persons of the African race. Now, hold on. Negroes or persons of the African race, because see, Negroes were never considered African, not until modern these modern years, because the Negroes are indeed the Israelites. OK, that went right over his head, even though he read it. OK, and, and the proof of it is when he reads the next definition. So according to law, not my opinion, you identify as a colored person, you're in this category. Matter of fact, any organization... Now, he's on point with that, you know? So calling yourself black, African, or colored, or any of those other names that was given... Indian? Mention Indian. Hmm. You're considered dead to the government. That's why we get mistreated the way we do within their law system. And I can tell he's in that because he's wearing a six point star on his chest, but yet he's got a five point star behind his head. So this is the brother that's involved in way too many uh, uh, different doctrines. All right. And I'm not sure if he's calling himself a Moor, if he's calling himself an Israelite, you know, but uh, his head is wrapped and I'm willing to bet that his crown is, is, is covered up as well because when Israelites wore uh, head wraps like that, a Mitri like that, the crown, the top was open. So that their crown was open to the Lord. The top of your head is actually not supposed to be covered. So let's let them continue. Those with so-called colored persons is in this category. Now watch this. It has also been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. What? Wow. Even is writing the law book, but our people are not taught to look in law books. So that's some heavy. That's a heavy nugget that he dropped right there. Because I wasn't aware of that. So I appreciate the brother on that note. All right. That was that was some good information. But let's continue. No, sir. Book reference. According to all. So so he's wearing. So he went to the Holy Quran. All right. And in the Quran, in the book of Cal, it tells you that the Israelites is the pre preeminent race and that they're to return to their God of Jacob. All right. That everyone is supposed to search out their God, Jacob. Tells you that right there in the Quran. All right. Now, once again, he's going to make a difference between a so-called black person and a so-called African. In this book. And records of the human race. 
there is no Negro, Black, or colored race attached to the human family because all of the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race, descendants of the ancient... Okay, so not only in Africa, but in Europe and in, 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 um, in all throughout Asia. Everyone was dark back then. Right. There wasn't any any person that was that was uh, pale until the Edomites came into existence, until Esau was born, and all his seed continued to be pale over time. Right, it's point blank period. And so just to prove that point, more so for the because there's always someone new, which is which is what this is really for. All right, um, this is the Zondervan's Compact Dictionary. I might still have that image in my phone. I could just show it and read it through that. Let me check that first in my evidence folder. Let's go to the evidence folder real quick. But, you know, other than his misunderstanding of the difference between, you know, so-called blacks and Africans, he that was some really good information that he dropped, all right, in that Law's Dictionary Bible. Let's go to the evidence folder here. And is it still there up front? No. Oh, there it is. I don't have to go to the book. I can just show it right here out of the phone. All right. And it says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. So the Negroes is a different dark race than the Africans, than the Hamites. All right. Remember, the uh, so-called white people claim that it was the curse of Ham is the reason why the so-called Negro went into slavery. But the, but the so-called Negro is actually a Judean of Shin, of Shem, Israelites, all right? But it says, uh, let me bring it a little bit closer. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Ethiopians, Egyptians, Libyans, and Canaanites, all right? So you the Africans are Hamites, that's who the Canaanites are. And the Shemites, the Negroes, were of a different bloodline, all right, of Shem. Okay? So we're giving you the facts. They'll, they'll, all right? Now, I'm going to go into, before we start this video, because I'm going to go through the video, all right, and then make, you know, comment on different imagery that I found in the video. But I'm going to read uh, an insert out of, out of, uh, Frank M. Snowden Jr.'s book, Blacks in Antiquity, all right? And on page 22, it reads, Art is in some respects more valuable than the literature or source of information for anthropological data. So like when this guy is giving you in this video that we're going to watch, eventually we'll get to it, but in this video that we're going to watch, um, some of the anthropological data that he's given is correct and some of it is wrong, but the art proves a certain point, especially artifacts and relics from the timepiece, okay? From the time periods, which the uh, so-called white man, you know, for the most part, uh, ignores modern day. Because, you know, I'm always telling you that the Scots, the Irish, the, 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 the Saxons, you know, the English and the Brits, well, the artifacts that, that was left behind and the bodies prove that they were not so-called white people yet. When you watch The Last Kingdom, the Viking movies, you know, they're always going to show you uh, white people as the Saxons, so-called white people as the Danes, so-called white people as the Scots and the Celts. And that that's not, that's that's a lie. All those people that live in those lands now, all these people running around for the Irish parade today, um, they're for the most part the people that came in after the fact, after the so-called black people were exterminated and removed from those lands all right, and then they came in and occupied them lands and kept the culture and called themselves by those names. The same way so-called white people came here to America and now call themselves Americans. It was no different from that, but they covered up that history, all right? And you have to understand also that this slavery, this brutal slavery that you're going to see in this video it was, is literally a, a payback for white enslavement. All right, we're gonna do another video on that, yet Lord willing, to prove that that you know that uh, their the white people were so-called uh, slaves to 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 people of color, and that women were concubines. And all I have to do is look at the Kingdom of the Moors, and the uh, the crypto Jews, the uh, 
the Morenos that ruled Portugal and Spain for 700, has 700 plus years, plus the rest of Europe after the fall of uh, Rome. All right. This was payback for, for that precious Rome. You know, Negroes, so-called Negroes, the Israelites brought down Rome and took it over. They took over all of Europe. Okay. But back to this book on page 22, it says, Art in some respects is more valuable than the lit literature as a source of information for anthropological data because it tells us much that the text does not about the pragmatism or its total absence. The extent of, of plethorant and the lip eversion facial proportions. So the art tells you a story that is ignored by the writers of books and makers of documentaries and et cetera, et cetera. This is on a, uh, no, not that one. That's page two. Let's read. It was another quick insert that they had in here. It's a lot here. Yeah, this is in, uh, in the preference um, on page eight. It says, even though some early anthropologists and archaeologists, ugh, that word, even some early archaeologists foresaw the significance of archaeological evidence, scholars and I have not always related properly the literary notices and logical material. So they would basically ignore um, archaeological evidence and then just write whatever the hell they want, right? Or present, you know. So let me give another scripture, all right? which is uh, Psalms 85 and 11. You know, the Lord left left relics behind to prove our, you know, the things that we say. This is uh, Psalms 85 and, and, and 11, and it reads, Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So these archaeological digs reveal certain truths that are ignored uh by mainstream, you know, individuals, completely ignored. Okay, so without further any further ado, we're going to go ahead and start the video, and um, you know, we'll go into it for you know a little bit and and bring out information um, until we finish it. So, the, but it, this will definitely be a, a part two, a part three series. All right, so let us begin. Let me get the sound right. Nasty sex lives of white slave masters during the transatlantic slave trade. Many societies tolerated and condoned human slavery for centuries. But in Wait, the let's go century, back. There's the first one. Because I, I read... And condoned human slavery for centuries. Right there, what you're looking at. When I said art is more important than, than uh, what's written. What you're looking at are natives being sold into slavery. Right there in this art from the 18th... Uh, from the... Uh, from the early 18th century, 17th century. All right. Just what I what I just read, Psalms 85 and 11. All right. And, and then how art in, in many instances is more important than a written text, because this is supposed to be they're talking about slave ship, slave market. And you see Negroes in the background. But what you're looking at are two native women being sold to the to, to for for slaves and sexual pleasures of these uh of these so-called white men. All right. When it says uh, Jeremiah 50 and 33, that Israel and Judah were, you know, oppressed together. Well, there it is. And then they made the sign not clear. Well, that was for a reason. Centuries. But in the 15th century, an expanded and terrifying. Whoa, let's era. go back so fast. Here, look. Centuries. Let's let us let it go. But in the 15th right, there you go. All right. You see this one about to be put to death. His head is in is caught in a brace. He must have been rebelling. This is an Arab man. This is an Arab man. This is a so-called African. And these are Israelite slaves. And this one is about to get his head cut off. Or or just put to death for whatever reason. He was being rebellious and fighting back, giving them a problem. Okay, now this is found in the Bible in Joel. 
You see, art is very important because art gives you, and so all you people who are all into the, you know, the Muslims played a big role in the enslavement of, uh, of their own people and uh, because of many, many of our people converted to Islam and were a part of this, okay? I always tell you that the Moors were some of the biggest race traders because of a lot of the Moors were here in America uh, willing and dealing with the so-called white man and selling a lot of their own people into slavery and own uh, 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 slaves themselves facts all right but uh let's go to the book of joel because you, you, you could take this scene right out of roots too when it says uh This is Joel 3. You know, I'll just start at 1. Let me just start at 1. Um, this is Joel 3 and 1, and it reads, For behold, in those days and in that time, when thou shalt bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. See? Judah and Jerusalem. Jerusalem representing the so-called natives of, of the Americas and the islands. All right? And Jerusalem... Uh, and uh, Jerusalem and Judah representing the so-called Negroes who came over here on cargo slave ships off the west coast of Africa. And it reads, and I will gather, and I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. All right. And that's perfect because that's what World War Three is going to kick off. If you understand and know what a valley of Jehoshaphat is, um, the, the, the nations are clashing over there now still to this day. All right. It says, and they, and it says, um, and I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them for my people, for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So we got scattered among all people and the Holy Land is parted between people that don't belong there. All right. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. You're looking at the slave trade right here. Some musket guns and wine, rum. All right. You see the woman is scantily covered with her. Looks like a baby is wrapped around on her, on her back. All right. The men only have loincloths. All right. And it says, yeah, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine? See? And that's in Tyre and Zidon are African nations. So when we tell you that Africans were selling so-called those Hamites that we saw earlier were selling so-called Negroes. All right. This is different dark races. All right. Not the same people. And it says, will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? And it seemed like it's been a long time, you know, 500 plus years. Uh, and, and the Africans helped put us in this condition. You know, my my brothers that came from the, uh, the I'm indigenous to the land, but, you know, I, my people that came here on the, uh, the slave ships, you know, the, those are my brothers, right? And we were all in suffering and in slavery uh, together, right? They just had us divided and not knowing who we are. This is all scriptural. And there is going to be a recompense from this. For this behavior. All right. So I'm going to uh, close out part one with one more scripture. And then we'll continue. Wow. We barely started the video. I'm like 30 seconds in. If that 15 seconds. Wow. But like I said, art and, and it was the art that was catching me. That was getting that caught my attention when I watched this uh, nine minute video. OK. But. uh Let's end with uh, Lamentations 4 and 21, 22. Yeah, and it says, uh, because Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, was behind this. All right? So this is Lamentations 4 and 21, and it says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee, and thou shalt be drunk, and thou shalt make thyself naked. That cup of slavery is going to them. Verse 22. 
The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So they're going into slavery, brutal slavery. Call Halal Yahweh by Shai by Hashem Rakar See you on the next lesson. Shalom.